We are here in a hotel room in Jamaica. Let me show you what I have here. This is a time lapse of a bunch of mushrooms you cannot grow in the US. This is my first touch of a living psilocybe mushroom. This is a magic mushroom right here. So there are compounds in here that will make you hallucinate. Ho, 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 ho. Holy crud. In fact, this is a psilocybin containing mushroom, which according to studies is as effective as the leading antidepressant medication. And the kind of cool thing about it is that it doesn't require daily doses. It's free if you know where to look and it grows all around us. Many of you are well aware of this beautiful mushroom, but some of you may not be as familiar. Maybe you're a little bit curious about it. I feel like my role here as a biologist is just to bring up the misconceptions, break some stereotypes, and talk about the science that is really underlying why this mushroom is so powerful. That is why I am here in Jamaica. The reason we're in Jamaica right now is because of, well, shall I say, a historical miscategorization. You see, the term magic mushrooms was introduced in 1957 by hobby mycologist R. Gordon Wasson, the first Westerner to participate in indigenous mushroom ceremonies in Mexico and then tell the story back to the West. Chemist Albert Hoffman discovered that these mushrooms contain the active ingredients psilocybin and psilocin. These compounds are found in nearly 200 species of mushrooms, most in the genera psilocybe, in addition to a few related genera. But for some difficult to understand reason, which I'll touch on later, their legal use was only just over a decade. Magic mushrooms were made illegal in most of the world in 1970 but not Jamaica. So here we can talk freely about it. Now, for those of you who don't know my background, I'm a biologist by training. I've been studying psychoactive plants and fungi and ethnobotany since I was in grad school 20 years ago, but I'm probably not your stereotypical champion of mushrooms. I don't wear tie dye. I don't have colored hair. I don't even have cool glasses. I actually grew up in the South. I'm a scientist through and through, but also do a lot within my church, and I love to explore Judeo-Christian archaeology. Definitely Moses passed through this area, right? I was 40 years old before I ever tried a psychoactive drug other than alcohol. I didn't even drink coffee. At my core, I'm an athlete. I focus on what I can do to live my best, most productive life. But around the time I hit 40, I started seeing the manifestation of a mental health crisis happening all around me. Now, I've probably only had just a few glimpses of what it might be like personally. I don't have depression. Yet, it appeared so prominently in the others around me. In fact, I would say 75% of the people I know via filmmaking and the arts and music suffered from depression, anxiety, PTSD, traumas. And this mental health struggle even took the life of people very close to me. And while I understand that having good mental and physical health is in large part about a lifetime of setting yourself up for success, making decisions, and it's just really hard work, the idea that there is a mushroom out there that has been used culturally for millennia that seems to be better at addressing some of these things than our modern pharmaceuticals, that is fascinating. Could it help the world, and for that matter, me? I'm here in Jamaica to see my first psilocybin-containing mushroom, Psilocybe cubensis. It's commonly referred to as the golden cap. This is Trad Cotter. He's my mycologist friend who's here to show me why these mushrooms are so incredibly cool. Now they're like, hey, some of our friends are missing. What happened to them? I believe that if you can't feel yourself, you can't heal yourself. I love the blue hair, Whoa. Trad. Looks good, eh? Trad actually grew up in the military and then studied mushrooms. He helped start a mushroom farm back in the States 25 years ago and grows all kinds of delicious gourmet mushrooms. He then discovered how these mushrooms could help people. In fact, he comes down to Jamaica every month to run these retreats to help people get better. I'm here specifically as part of one of these group therapy sessions. Overlooking the water. This is an A plus for me. Now for a little bit of yoga. For the sake of understanding what this mushroom is all about, and not just something I read on Wikipedia, I'm going for it here, and I plan to experience what everyone else is going through in this safe and legal setting. I should note that when I talked to my mom, my mom was not thrilled 
about this. In fact, she basically said, Do not use drugs, Rob, because they will melt your brain. That is what I had to ask Irene. It's definitely not going to melt your brain cells. Absolutely not. And there is a <laughs> proof for that. We have you know, so many years experience in the clinical research and we know how it works. We know for sure. We're not guessing. Irene is our therapist helping guide us through this journey. She has years and years of experience. You want to get help, so try with a low dose, with the right settings, right facilitators, therapists, and you'll be fine, you'll be safe. All the decisions about this therapy is based on her judgment about certified clinical trials being done in the U.S. And they're done with that level of expertise and that level of safety here in a safe setting. And one thing that is really important to note is that this compound is extremely safe. They're non-toxic, there's no LD50, which means there's no lethal dose for taking psilocybin. This is an important point, and I wanted to elaborate on this. So let's compare it to something we all know of, alcohol. One glass, about this much, might make you buzzed, but 10 times that, which is like two, two and a half bottles here, that will kill you. That is the lethal dose. That means the lethal dose to effective dose of alcohol is 10. Now you can visualize that like this. Here's alcohol with a value of 10. Now let's compare other drugs to alcohol. You have heroin, datura, and nutmeg, which are actually more lethal. That means they have a value of less than 10. Now less lethal, according to this ratio, is cocaine, ecstasy, codeine, ketamine, kava kava, and then almost off the chart is psilocybin at over a thousand. That means it's almost impossibly high for a lethal dose. So that's good. That means it's actually fairly safe. Now here's one more way to visualize these drugs. I can plot this ratio versus the dependency potential. You have low, moderate, high, and I put another one very high. So drugs with a very low lethal dose to effective dose, like we talked about down here in this region, those can be very dangerous drugs. And then combine that with the fact that if you have a high dependency potential, they're very addictive. So up here at the top, you have heroin, morphine, not too far off, you have nicotine, which is very highly addictive. You also have cocaine, alcohol, and MDMA and caffeine, which I know a lot of us are dependent on. Then you have ketamine, and then way to the other end here, you have psilocybin. It is basically the opposite of an addictive drug. Oddly, this data seems to be the proof needed to take it off Schedule One drug status, which states that there is a high potential for abuse and no currently accepted medical use. The FDA has noticed the science too, and in 2019 designated psilocybin a breakthrough therapy for severe depression. And that that is what I want to investigate more because let's just say there's a lot of science that seems to indicate that it is potentially very valuable. And that is why I'm here in Jamaica, swimming in the ocean, on a beach, in a yoga studio, doing yoga, all with a bunch of others who have a shared interest in the breakthrough science that is showing how this mushroom can actually help people. This is what we know so far. This mushroom does some interesting things within the brain. Here is a mind map of neural connections of a normal brain. Each color maps a different brain region. Here is the same brain on psilocybin. Essentially, it creates strong links all over the brain. It also turns down the default mode network, which is how we can ignore things that don't seem to be relevant at the time. By turning that off, people are often able to perceive things that they would never be able to perceive before. Colors are connected to smell and music, but it also makes it easier for people to connect the dots within their own brain. Now before I go any further, I should note that I'm not promoting people go randomly experiment with any of this. I'm here to describe how it's done in a supervised setting. We are all working through this together with the help of a therapist. Trust in these people here is extremely important. Luckily, I gelled well because Irene was a pharmacist and like me, she didn't really like what the standard drugs were doing to people, dampening emotions. And Trad is a scientist from Clemson who's very analytical and I trust that he was growing good mushrooms. And Pasha, who like myself is an athlete and is now serving to watch over the group, so he made sure we all felt safe. Point is, this medicine works differently. I had to wrap my head around that. You see this approach of finding intention through this session like this, and then letting this medicine amplify your current state is partly how it all works. 
amazingly. But I was excited to figure out how this affects everyone here. Tomorrow's the day. So here's where the mushroom experience happens. Be wearing masks, laying on mats, with blankets. Knowing that it's a safe space is really important because that affects your own experience. That's what's so interesting about these mushrooms. Now I decided my plan for the session was to just observe things, not document too much. I took notes in my notebook, but promised everyone else I wouldn't be filming their experience. After I handed my camera off to start this process, I put on my eye shades and my headphones. I went into a deep meditation. I'm gonna try to describe better what it was like in the next video, but I will say for now, I understand why people create stock video clips just like this. It was intense, and honestly, it was more of a feeling than a visual experience. Occasionally, the others in the room would come over, put a hand on mine, let me know I was okay. A couple hours in, I thought the journey was over, so I walked outside. And this, oddly, is where the real magic happened. And truly amazing conversations and insight ensued. I went through what felt like an exorcism with Ewi, who is a saint. I don't think a lot of people have like experienced it this way. It's special. Very rewarding. <laughs> it was hard, and things come up that haven't been dealt with in a long time but I feel like it was a thousand years of therapy in eight hours. And what blew my mind is that when the mushrooms were taken in this way, it seemed that most people had a very powerful experience and then stated a pretty admirable takeaway. And so it's given me a direction for how to go home and be a better dad, which is incredible. I was here really worried about being away from my family and my kids, and it's given me some relief that there was a big purpose to this. I just want to be a good dad trying my best. These powerful revelations, which seem obvious, are sticky too. Johns Hopkins researchers found that people trying to stop smoking had an 80% success rate after six months with use of psilocybin. Compare that to only 35% with those taking the leading smoking cessation drug. It's also helping people get over anxiety, depression, traumas, and end-of-life fears. And it helps people make the changes they want to make. That's cool. And I still don't know how to explain what's happening. This is a medicine for healing. It really meets you where you are. It allows you to receive what you're ready for. This is ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge and access that we have. When we can move beyond just thinking about it as a drug, it calls in the curious souls, ones who have tried everything, right? And it's available in here for whoever and whenever you want to explore. And that's it. We're done. Now it's clear that this mushroom isn't this bad thing that people have portrayed it as. While we're still understanding how it works, we know it can help a lot of people if used in the right way. So here I am at the integration bonfire, writing down with everyone else the things I want to move past, and then tossing it in the fire. Now I'm not sure how I created such a bond in three days with the people here, but I think we all share a vision for a brighter future. I hope more people can experience this. So how now could I not want to share this, the science and this experience with others? Because I do think if people opened up to this and explored their mind in this way, it really would make the world a better, more loving place for all of us. It really is a medicine if used right. And all the people that we did it with were warm and wonderful and courageous and it's just awesome. It's good to do it with you too. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel kind of excited that I can make a video about this now while it's fairly new and not everybody knows about it already. So if you have stories that you want to share about how it has affected you, leave it down in the comments. Of course, it's not for everyone. We'll address that in the next video. There you have it. And a big thank you to all of my patrons who, by the way, I send postcards to and books, depending what tier you're in, you help support this work. I will also say I'm going to talk about what this trip was like for me, for them, and in the next video. Here's a sneak peek. An octopus was wrapping up a purple palace, but it was beautiful. 